I'd like to welcome everyone to the Challenge 40 Battle of the Era. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Map One, the Right Reality Podcast. Hello, everybody. My name is Steven. And my name is Mixie. We are here to recap episode six of season 40 of the challenge, My Real Friends Era. I would give this episode a mid. Oh, what is the scale that you have? Are there layers? Is it just It's whatever low? I'm feeling after I watch mm. it, and this one is a mid. Just straight mid. So- Next That's episode. how I felt once it ended. I was like, this was mid. I think that we had such a beautiful episode last time that my expectations were too high. There was great parts in this episode, but I just don't feel like it was as perfect as the last one. So I'm going to give it a mid. Are there episodes when it's done where you go, oh, this gets five stars or nine, two like there's different ways for the episode to be rated. It's not just like a low, mid, high. Yeah. It's like just sometimes like, you might get three squirrels on a D- Detroit power line, which is a yeah. great rating, right? Yeah. And, and that would that would be a pretty good rating. Yeah. I it, it they always get a different rating. I feel like I normally say how I feel about the episode right at the beginning too. And this one gets a mid from me. There was a lot of good stuff. There was a lot of dull moments. There was a lot of questions that are still unanswered for me personally. Um, And I'm excited to, maybe you have the answers. (laughs) Somebody might have the answers, but we didn't fucking see the answers. So, um, but it was, it was good. And it started off with a classic. Now we know it's coming. It's the, uh, one of the seasons in the frame and the whole time I'm sitting there, because obviously I don't know what the fuck these seasons numbers are. And I'm like, Steven, did anybody get it? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, did anyone guess the season, which was season 21 Rivals? I am sad to report nobody got it. Damn. Damn. So the prize is still up for grabs then. The prize is still up for grabs. Now, listen, there I have a few of these. So you can win. Like there's going to be a winner each week. And again, you guys, it seems pretty easy to win. Just pick a season on YouTube and comment. Or as some of the hotties found out this week, you can make a hotties post saying, these are my guesses for the week and everybody can do it in the hotties. Now here's the thing. Don't guess one in YouTube and one in hotties. Like I know who you are. Don't try to game the system, right? We you don't get like one that. guess. We were clear about that. But Stephen Mixie set the rules and she was very clear. One guess. Okay? I always am very clear about my rules. Stephen, I do think that maybe it's because we didn't show them what they're going to win. Should I show them? I think you should show them. Drum roll. Okay. Okay. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. L- ladies and gentlemen, your prize is if you get the season and you're the only one or you're selected, is this beautiful challenge drawstring tote bag. Look at that. (laughs) Can you describe it? Because I'm like moving between the microphones. Left and right. Steven has in his hands a beautiful challenge bag. It is a string tie bag that you can pull to close. It's a backpack situation. You can see through it. You guys can take this bag to like concerts and stuff because I know you have to have bags that they can see through. This is the perfect, perfect prize. And we and Steven has so many of them and we want to give them to you, but we're not just going to pass them out. We're going to get something from you and that's engagement. So when you engage and you engage correctly, you win this bag. And that's kind of fucking sick if you ask me. I'm glad they did ask you because it is sick. It's pretty fucking sick. And what other podcast out there other than the number one is just handing out challenge drawstring bags? Um, let me let me check. Oh, none. None. But we are. And that's why you love us. And that's why we're the number one. So leave your guesses in the comments i'm gonna go ahead and hit you with an 18 
you're going to hit me with an 18. Okay, let me let me get the official record here. Mixie next week is going with an 18. And you know what? Am I going to play? I, I was maybe going to pick the right same season. Oh, are we going to go closest to the season number? I mean, no, we have to get it. Okay. This is, again, okay. this goes back to previously on. We have to get it. I'm going to say I'm going to go with 29. I don't know what seasons these are when I guess. We have no idea. 20. Tw- <laughs> season 29. You know what season I know it's not? It's not Dirty 30. So, you know, I do know that. It's the season right before this podcast launched. So there is that. Um, there you go. Fantastic. I can't believe no one got it. I thought we were I thought I was gonna be at the post office today, just dropping off a bag for somebody. Well, you might be there next week. We have to Whoop. we have to manifest good thoughts. Somebody's gonna How get it this you? week. It better be me. If it's not me, because I already have a bag. If it's not me, I hope it's one of you. Leave your guesses in the comments below. And let's get yes. into this episode. Also, while you're there, if you don't subscribe, I'm punching you right in the face. Our goal is a thousand by the end of the season. We are growing, but in case you don't know, YouTube shows us how many of you guys are watching that aren't following and aren't subscribed. So push that subscribe button and lick the like button. I don't think I said that right. Hot cucks. Let's get into this episode. (laughs) I don't want to be a cuck. Okay, we do. It's we fine. Should... We're gonna cuck up later. So we get into this episode, and of course, Laurel makes a comment to Kara because she can't not. And um, Kara says, "I'm gonna fucking as soon as that horn's blown, I'm gonna sit on that starting line." And I was so pumped. It's the most pumped I've been for Kara. Please throw this, Kara. I was so yeah. excited. I couldn't wait to watch Kara throw this fucking mission and have Laurel lose her goddamn mind on her. And probably bananas, too, because it would affect bananas as yeah. well. I yeah. wanted it so bad. I wanted it so bad. And I was so upset with her when she decided not to do it. She's a better person than me. I would have fucking thrown the hell out of that. Not only would I have thrown it on my end, I would have been tripping my teammates. I would have been holding their shirts back. I would have gone... Full out. You want to fuck with me? You going to find out. This is one of two decisions that people made on this show this week that disappointed me. This was one, obviously. And the other was somehow, again, we are not putting bananas in. I, I We're going to get there. Of course, we put the power in Josh's hands. What were we expecting? A, a smart, actual, good decision? Obviously not. That's on us. You're right. That's on us. That's on us. That's on we us. We also got uh, John A. backstory pretty early into the episode, and I put getting John A.'s backstory not looking good for her. Not looking good for you, John A. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can't get a backstory that early in, although I will say we also got some information on Jenny, which was interesting. There's so many things about this Jenny situation in the beginning of this episode that we need to discuss. Okay. Let's, dis- let's discuss Jenny's upset with Michelle for not volunteering. Grease back bun babe exists, everybody. I know that like she's just floating around. We got three minutes of camera time. Three minutes of grease back bun babe camera time with her talking to the camera mm -hmm. about somebody else that is not, guess who, babe. I don't think that's ever happened on the show before. It was crazy, but... Like, sure, Michelle probably should have volunteered, but also so should Greaseback. But how is everybody getting upset with each other for not volunteering and nobody gives a shit that Casey isn't? I don't understand. Makes no sense whatsoever. Like, she has a pulse. She is on your team. She's been on all, like, she's there. She does exist in the timeline. She is there. So, like, why? I'm not trying to defend Michelle. Michelle probably should have said something. But... So should Greaseback Bombay. If you're going to be mad, be mad at both of them equally. Why are you just only going in on Michelle? It doesn't make any sort of sense, honestly. I think maybe what had happened 
was Jenny was clearly picking a wedge really bad during this thing, and maybe it distracted everybody from the fact that Greaseback Bun Babe was not nominating herself. Mm-hmm. Is that Jenny was just you? You mean quads for days, hammies for days, glutes for days, and she's just there picking a wedge in bed, mm-hmm. and people are like, "Oh my god!" Like uh, nothing else matters at this point. I can't even think rationally that Chris Beck Bump Baby hasn't nominated herself. And it's fine if you're going to say, hey, this isn't going to be a team where we're saying people should self-nominate. Um, but you are saying that. You, yeah. you, you are saying that. But in this specific set of circumstances, uh, you're not. And I think what we found out later was it's all dependent on – who goes first? So Laurel's name was up, and maybe Greaseback Bum Babe or Michelle was going to self nominate, and it's like Laurel, and they're like, "Yeah, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we shouldn't raise our hand. Maybe we should just shut the fuck up." I could see that being the case. I feel gives a very big advantage to Era Three and Era Four at this point. Oh, it it definitely does. I do think that they should go backwards right? at a certain point, especially also. Because there's only two girls left on Era One, so like they already know what one of the females yeah. is going to be every single time. Um, yeah, I mean, who knows what we weren't shown? But yeah, all I'm going to say is is if you're going to get mad that someone that hasn't been a target isn't volunteering, you should be equally mad at all of the people that haven't volunteered to be a target. Well, the fact that Casey Stop. was the one saying it on camera felt a little strange too it's like oh she's upset about this situation I'm like girl you're right there too exactly and even michelle was like sure should i have like self-nominated maybe but like and grease back by was just like jenny's mad because she doesn't have any friends i'm like um i think it's more of the fact that you didn't volunteer but god forbid we self-reflect that would be crazy yeah it was just like a little bit of like yeah maybe that's like 20% of it, but like 80% of it is like, I thought we were all taking turns up here. Like, I thought we were very clear that we're taking turns, and somehow I'm up again, and other people haven't taken the motherfucking turns like they said. So I'm a little, I'm a little upset with that. I'm a little upset. I get her, I get her upsetness. Um, I have a question for you on the Jenny situation. Like I said, we had some background on Jenny. How do you feel about guinea pigs? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Because we've discussed rats, but how many guinea pigs? Is I kind of Jen- knew this might be a game we would play. Um, how many guinea pigs for Jenny? So guinea pigs I would are argue bigger, that guinea right? pigs are just fat rats. I think the guinea pig uh, chamber of commerce would maybe have an argument with you about that, that they are not fat rats that they are soft adorable creatures i don't know that's maybe something you would say did you go to a school where there was a pet guinea pig in one of the classes is that something you did no i feel like people that i've heard stories of people like oh we had a pet guinea pig in class and we all had to take turns taking care of it and taking it home i was like that seems forced upon the parents in a way that they shouldn't do i'm looking forward to the people who are currently typing in the youtube comment section that oh i did that and one of the kids in the class killed the guinea pig my mother wouldn't have let me inside of the house with an animal. Not a chance. No? No. Did you try to sneak one in? My sister got a guinea pig. Or no, it was a hamster. She hid it in her closet for like three months. And then one day my mom was in the hallway and she heard scratching. Oh, and she thought no. there was a rat in the wall. So she calls an exterminator and an exterminator comes over and walks out of my sister's room with a hamster cage. Oh, there was like a, a whole ass cage. Oh, yeah. She had like a whole cage. of we- It was on the wheel. That's what my mom was hearing was the hamster on the and wheel. And like the water bottle? Whole, whole nine. Nice. In her closet. And so my mom finds it. She's livid. So she's like, this thing is living in the garage. We're in the winters in Ohio. That ha- that guinea pig or hamster or whatever the hell it was lasted a day. And the next morning, we went outside to see it before we went to school. And guess whose cage magically was open? 
My mother, God bless her, hates nature and she will not have any of it anywhere close to her at any point in time. So I don't know how this hamster magically was able to use its thumbs and open its cage, but it was gone. Hmm. And she was like, oh, did it get out? Wow, that stinks. I feel like that's something you would do. I think I'd be more creative. Oh, okay. I think I'd give it like a little like stick and bag and I would take a yeah. picture of it and I'd send yeah. it as an email and be like, hey, it's Oreo. I need to take a trip for a while. I'll be back soon. Was its name Oreo? I don't remember. I don't even I was know like, what an incredible name. pull of a random name that you just came up with out of nowhere. I just remember how pissed my mom was. That she found the hamster. Mm, livid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... In this magical scenario that we're creating out of nowhere, nowhere getting uh, sidetracked from the challenge episode, uh, this is what you come to the number one for. Welcome. Um, mine wrote a note. Mine left a note. Like it was leaving the the house. Like it was running away, right? It didn't yeah. have the thing, but it had left a note. Um, and at the end, it says, uh, I'm sorry, is how it ends the note, you know? Uh, sign yeah. platypus. Uh, uh-huh. Platypus signed it. Yeah, I need to go on an adventure. I'll be back. And then yeah, I need back. to. I need to go explore the world. No, for it's myself. more like actually, I think that I would have written a note that was like, "I'm gonna go get milk." Oh, and just never come back again. Sidetrack: the guy who was who finished second. I'm putting that in air quotes on the Bachelor at this year. Um, that's what happened to him and his brother. His dad left to get milk. Both of them just. Deuced out. That's crazy. Crazy. Take care of your kids. If you're going to have a kid, take the fuck care of it. Anyways. Come on. Come on, guys. What would you, really quickly, what would you prefer to have a conversation with Jenny about? Snacks, guinea pigs, or working out? Go. Snacks. I think I'm there, too, because we could talk about British snacks and American snacks. I definitely don't want to talk to her about working out. That's the last thing I want to have a conversation with her about. I I laughed my ass off. It was later in the episode. She had a bag of chips and she went to throw them on her bed and it bounced right off the bed onto the ground. And she did not see that at all. Oh, hilarious. She had a Mountain Dew in her hand and she tossed this bag of chips and it just beep and it went right onto the ground. I was like, Jenny can't win, except for she did win. Was that more of a sign about the state of the bag of chips or how hard that bed was? I think it was option two. Jenny Those also had a vape in her hand. Up. I caught the vape. Did you guys oh. catch the vape when she was talking to bananas on the day bed? Bright no. red vape. I'm always on vape watch. I was about to say, if there's anybody on vape watch, which now I feel like we need a Baywatch theme song for vape watch. Vape watch. Sometimes in the darkness, about to step into the light. I don't know how I remember the Baywatch song. I'm shocked, like that. I, I'm sh- I'm not shocked that that people are vaping, but I would think like once the cameras are on you and like you're having a conversation, we're recording it. Don't you think that the the production would be like, hey? Although personally, I, th- I think it would really add a nice flair if she's sitting there talking to bananas, just blowing smoke in his face. Yeah, that would take, you know, um, somebody with great self-control when you're like recording something for a long time and might need a vape. Yeah, but you don't hit it. On camera, Mm -hmm. you know. Because you're trying to hide your addiction. A hundred percent. It shows that you have self-control and Mm -hmm. more so than anything else. You know what it shows me, Mixie? That this person can quit whenever they want. Whenever they want. It's a choice that they're making and they've quit in the past without even a second thought and they'll do it again once their life isn't an absolute train wreck. You know what I mean? And I see that in Jenny. Exactly. I was like, I want to make sure we're only talking about Jenny at this point. She's dealing with a lot. Okay. Michelle didn't volunteer. God forbid Greaseback Bumbe be involved in that conversation. But let's talk shit about Michelle and also Devin for unknown reasons. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you're going to sit here and say that uh, she shouldn't vape after all of that? Can we Who are you to say that? Be happy for people in a happy relationship. I don't I, I don't understand that either, but whatever. Let's blow it up, bananas. We'll get there. Nobody has a great relationship on the challenge, and we're trying to squash one already. 
because you're looking out for her. We'll get there, but you can see where we're already ramping up for it. You're looking out <laughs> well, for her. Give as we me ramp a fucking up. break. Josh comes out of nowhere. Do you know the question that I'm about to ask you about Josh? Because he said something about bananas. Josh said the following. Bananas took me under his wing. Mixie. Did he? Did he? Did he? I have no idea. I think Bananas has been using Josh since the day he walked onto this show. There you go. Big Brother sucks. Everybody knows it. And we're going to continue to use these motherfuckers. Devin uses them. Jo- or bananas uses them. It, it, and bananas, once he doesn't get picked, he even point blank says that he's using this fucking moron. Yeah. Yeah. And I honestly think if bananas stood and looked Josh dead in the eyes and goes, I'm making you feel guilty and using you so that you feel like you owe me something and you don't put me in, Josh would be like, okay, I'm not going to do it. You got my back. You know what I am? I'm bananas number one. My name's Josh. All I do is cry and bitch and moan. And bananas is, I'm bananas number one. How Josh could sit there and go, this is better for my game. I'm in the vacation alliance. So I am probably one of the most protected people here right now in terms of the men. And I'm going to keep bananas a seven-time champion, also while Jordan is here. And Laurel is also attached to Bananas that could have gone in as well. And can I also state for the record, the last episode when they brought up the Vacation Alliance, Josh was the one that looked at John A. and said, you're in the Alliance. You let us stay at your house in Nashville. And then he turns around Sends not only John A, but his bestie that he cried to. And we got fucking flashbacks of more Josh crying. Fuck. We got that. Sorry. And we're going to go kiss the fucking banana peel? I don't get it. It makes no sense. But here's the thing. It makes sense because it's Josh. But that's the only this way ha- it makes sense. You just have to go, what would not make sense in this situation? Oh, he would vote for that. Okay, so... Uh, that's that's what's going to make the least amount of sense. So I'm going to go with that. And since we're already here, let's talk about the fact that he goes in there to the room with Era 4 and is like, hey, guys, so I know, like, we're safe and we're the ones in the chamber, but I want to, like, make sure I get your guys' opinion because, you know, this we're affects team. the team. And then just goes... Yeah, no, never mind. I'm good. I'm not going to help out any of the women on my fucking team here and put probably one of the top two females on the show into an elimination. And guess what? You have a perfect excuse to say to Bananas, hey, a lot of our people are pissed. Because of what Laurel did last week. And how many times have we seen that, Mixie, on this show? That it's like, hey, you know, you pissed off everybody in the house, so we're going to vote for you. They had an easy cop out of being like, listen, everybody's mad at her. I'm sorry you're attached to her. This is what I have to do. But God forbid Josh think. We can't get into all this right now because we have to go to the daily. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Time to time to captain up. Okay. Cap, we're captaining up, okay? We're not doing the other thing. Don't look at me like that. I didn't say anything. You, you While we're putting this on, I would just like to say for the record, um, I'm upset with every single one of you that's listening right now because I still haven't been spoiled. And I don't know how much more clear I could be Stop. about no. wanting to get spoiled. And no. I, I'm I so proud of you guys. You about me, that you no. want to be my friend, that we're friends. No. No, you are friends. They are friends. And I they're have, they're I've the number one friends. DMs and no, I got don't DM. Nada. No, pull, don't do that. Don't don't get suckered in. Don't. I'm not. You know what you're doing right now? You're trying to Johnny Bananas. Everybody out there, that's a Josh. That's what you're trying to do. And how dare you? I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. I'm very proud of all of you. Every one of you. Team, are you on? Pick a side. Me or Steven? 
Let's not do that. I do not want to know the results of that poll, please. Well, if I don't get a DM next week, I'm going to have some strong words for every single one of you. I want to thank the one person, only one of you this week, who reached out and put in the comment section, yes, I would like to sit on a mall bench with you, Stephen. Great. Now, nobody said, you know, be great, you know, if, you know, they sat on my face. I didn't get that one. So that's fine. I understand it might be a little bit harder for women to express that publicly. Fuck the patriarchy. Ally. Um, We love women and we love the daily. 99 loft balloons. That's exactly what I thought. 99 loft balloons. I don't know. She's speaking a different language when she sings that song. She does. That is, that is the way the, uh, the thing works. A bop nonetheless, though. I felt like these were very large condoms that had been blown up because they, they, they weren't really balloons. They were like, they were giant latex gloves. It looked like they were so easily poppable. And I yeah. want to know, was that by design? Did they have yeah. to like Google or Amazon like large weather balloons that easily pop? Like how do you acquire said easily poppable balloons? Because I imagine if you're trying to sell balloons to an audience, one of the things you don't want to tell people is how easily they pop. Who knows uh, how they got these balloons? But I mean, they were popping when they were already up in the sky. It's fantastic. fantastic. And they were also like, I think Naya was like, if it's attached and it pops, it still counts or something. I'm like, how, yeah, what the fuck is going on? Yet another situation where it's like the, we don't have all of the information as to how somebody could win. Here we are again. Easy Mr. TJ ADR when he's back at home in Vegas is, you know, hey. Just add this line. We'll add it in. If the balloon pops while it's already attached, it still counts. You know? So it's, easy. It's simple. So so easy. Right? I Hey, we got a random graphic for Kylan at one point. Loved that. That. That, was, that. that was That wasn't much needed. I love these once in a daily random tags of a person for no reason at all. When they're not being referenced in the shot or we're like, oh, where is he to wherever the other people are? The next shot, after they pointed to it, hey, it's Kylan. What's up, guys? It's Kylan. He's then, it's a singular shot of him crawling on the ground. So I don't know. Maybe we could deduce that that was Kylan. But thank God they gave us the graphic. I I am sometimes very grateful for that because sometimes I'm like, was that Kylan? Was that? Who was that? Because here's the thing. A little bit later in the episode, since since we're talking about things that we need to explore and figure out. There was a shot of somebody in the gym working out. With sunglasses on? With the sunnies on. So you you saw this, and I was like, who's working out with sunnies on inside? And at first, I thought it was Josh, because he was wearing those Oakleys earlier while he was talking to... Um, Tori. Tori. And I was like, oh, we're not, we're not blurring out Oakley. We're just showing Oakley, but... Olivia last year gets her whole fucking eyeballs blurred out for the entire season. But Oakley, I guess, is the sponsor of the challenge. Also, Oakley, um, you know, DMs are open. We'll we'll fashion some great sunnies here. Do you think we're not sunny models? I saw Corey wearing sunglasses inside and I thought about making a comment and I was just like, no, I feel like this is what he wants and I'm not giving it to him. We're not. Oh, so that that was Corey. It was Corey. Okay, okay. All right. I, I immediately clocked it, and I immediately was like, nope, next. But let's go back to the daily. Um, yes, please. Nothing was funnier than when Laurel was talking about apologizing to her team and all that shit, and you saw Kara's face in the corner. And again, I'm like, I can't wait for you to throw this. And then she says she's not throwing it. And I threw my water bottle at the TV. If you're not going to throw it, I will. Girl, Why? And, and you know Ryan and Derek would have done it with you, no questions yes. asked. Yes, yes. And I don't know where Aviv lies, but potentially Aviv as well. They could have so easily thrown this, and it was so fucking upsetting that they didn't. Do you know how easy it would have been for them to just go and grab the balloon and just throw it into the ground? Hey, Laurel. Each and every time. 
Have fun down there. See you later. I, for the life of me, do not understand how this decision came about. The only thing she said to the camera was basically, I can't bring myself to that level. That's kind of what she said, right? Is like, I can't bring myself to that level. Boo. Boo. Yeah, that is. She said something like that. I was just so upset. You you can do it. Not only can you, everyone supports you. Yes, and people on the other team, I think, support you as well. So, 100%. You know, it also helps your game so you have a game excuse mm -hmm. and not just I'm going to get my, you know, revenge here, if you will, in a way. I will um, just it, never I, get it. I won't get it. I will never understand. As we continue into the daily, Derek breaks his leg, question mark? He's fucking crawling on the ground? I thought for sure he broke his leg. And then the rest of the episode just continued as if uh, we all watched something that didn't actually happen. And there was... And that was let me what check I my was notes discussing. Here. Let me check my notes. Let's see. Um, did they mention Derek's leg breaking and where he was crawling for the rest of the episode? Oh, I don't see it anywhere. The next time we see Derek after this daily is at the outing and he's standing with Brad. Like what happened? How? How? What what really what did you really do? I just put I'm so confused did Derek break his leg? And he's like fine. The, he's he's he just was, carrying on with life and apparently nothing happened. There's no like follow up in the ambulance where the doctor goes, you know, speaking in foreign language, you're okay. You didn't break your leg. We didn't take you to the hospital to do an x ray to make sure you didn't, you know, tear an Achilles or something like that. VO, him and his ITM, literally anything. Why anything. was this never discussed again? Anything. Anything. It was a large part of the daily. And then, mm -hmm. oops. oops. Motherfucker's crawling on the ground. He's He has a medic that's on him, and he's like, no, I'm going again. He's one-legged through the goddamn thing. Meanwhile, his teammates are just popping balloons left, right, and center. I mean, I'm surprised that they even continued. Uh, the, the amount of balloons that they popped was crazy. And I do think that some of them were kind of bullshit. It seems yeah. like everybody got some kind of bullshit balloon pops, though. But man, era one, I, I mean, it's so funny and I'm also so rooting funny. for them, but it's also just like so good. It's just so good. I'm so curious as to what's going to happen once they really like they're going to disappear. Like what happens when it's just one guy on era one? Uh, I think when it gets to one guy, one girl, I think that's when we get to our um, single, single eliminations. Yeah, with a switch in the guys game. week, girls week situation, unless they shock us and deliver a you know a clean fourteen fifteen episode season, which no, no shot that's happening. Uh, not a chance in hell. Um, the, I mean, I wanted Rachel to win the elimination, but a part of yeah. me was like, I want to see what happens. Me too. Me too. If it's just now Tina, and then like you can't pick the same target, but then Tina's the only girl, so then is Tina just stuck in this loop for the rest of ever? Um. I wanted to see it, but I'm also, I'm happy that Rachel won. But it was so funny seeing all of those balloons pop. And then the riddle comes up. I can't stress to you enough. You could give me three weeks. You can give me a month. I would never get this riddle. I am horrific at riddles. Ooh, are you? Horrific. Couldn't be worse. Don't even ask me them. They piss me off. It's like escape rooms. Why are we doing Do this? Do they? I'm tall when I'm young and short when I'm old. What am I? A wilting flower. No. I'm tall when I'm young and short when I'm old. What am I? Benjamin Button. A candle. What has a head and a tail, but no body? A penis. <laughs> No, 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 not that. A potato. A potato? An avocado, thanks. Thanks. 
Uh, that would be a coin. That would be a coin, okay? I'm legitimately trying. I'm going to give you one more. I'm not going to get it. What is full of holes and still holds water? Now, I know you want to yell glory hole hallway. I'm going to give you a hint. It's not glory hole hallway. What is full of holes but still holds water? My body? It, that's not the answer, but I feel like I should give it to you. I'm just going to say every answer I've given is technically correct. I don't think a penis has a tail, though. Yeah, that's what the gooch is. Oh, okay. Uh, the answer to that was a sponge. A sponge. I was right there. You were. This close. Again, my answers are correct. All of them. Every single one of them was correct. I googled riddles for kids. So, yeah, Benjamin Button, also correct. Yeah. All I'm going to say, I get why a riddle is on the challenge. It's supposed to be like this. In real fucking life, why the hell are we playing these goddamn games with words? We have a language that we can speak. Why don't we just fucking say what it is? This isn't fun for me. This is not an enjoyable situation. Again, escape rooms, not fun. Why am I putting myself in a situation where I don't want to be inside and I have to do a bunch of shit to get out? Why don't I just not go in in the first place? Fucking scary movies. Why do you yeah, want fuck to be movies. terrified? Fuck those. You know what's scary? Living. Having a pulse is terrifying. I'm good. Yeah. Don't need additional scary stuff. There. Here's, here's the more concerning part. Just say fire. The more concerning part is people like really like scary movies. They're like, oh, I fucking love to get scared. I'm like, something is wrong with you. That is not a normal reaction. Your no. body is going, ah. And then you're just like, yeah, I want to sign up for that. Check yourself in somewhere. I don't want to sound repetitive, but cold plunges are the exact same thing. They're in the same fucking thing. Why oh. are you shocking your body for no fucking reason? You know what's scary? Having a pulse. Living. What were they supposed to do with some of these balloons? Because some of them appeared to be larger than the space they were supposed to travel on. Like, there was one part where, like, Bananas is on the ground, and it looks like he's pulled, like, three feet of the balloon onto himself and is still, like, backwards waddling Mm -hmm. through the thing mind you on a very hard surface so note to the stylus for this episode last week mixie brought up the fact that they had knee pads that were too big and elbow pads and what did they need them for and you know what i thought this week hey why don't they have them you got the wrong week they were for next week they got delivered early your amazon prime showed up early they definitely should have had knee pads and elbow pads. I saw so many people with like band aids on after oh. the daily. Like, I... everyone is crawling on the dirt, and I was like, "That looks like like they're on their hands and knees crawling with it, or they're on their back." And I go, "That's not like American soil dirt. Like no. when you're in the backyard, that's gravel. Like, that's that was legit gravel. That's like you put your knee down." And like the little rock becomes permanently part of your kneecap situation. I think I tore my meniscus watching people do this. Like Michelle's doing a backwards crab Uh move. And I'm like, respect, queen. And then she jumps on the thing. And I think our balloon's going to pop. I was like, oh, my God, what's going on here? The the absolute lunacy that you could not predict when the balloon was going to pop or not like Jordan's just like jumping down like Mm -hmm. into the ravine and the balloon pops. I'm like, yeah. And Nehemiah was just literally standing and it just popped. Like, I I don't know if they had little triggers inside of these balloons or if they they put a couple needles into some of them. Something was going on because there's no way wind is popping balloons like this. I just, I can't believe it. 
it was so good. I, I loved it so much. It brought so much humor. There was one part um, where, um, who was it? There was, there was somebody who um, was holding one of the balloons. Oh, Derek jumps, breaks his leg basically immediately. Rachel pops her balloon. Brad then, after he was yelling at her, stands up and his pops, like by just standing up, cinema. And each time they're showing Rachel's balloon pop, like in her face, she's becoming more and more defeated mentally Mm -hmm. that there's a way that you can win. It was like they were in Saw. They were playing games they could not win. It was just like, I'm just waiting for the balloon to pop at this point, you know? Yeah. Hilarious. Very early on, we all knew Era 1 was going to lose that one. Happy for Era 4 to get that W. It was a good watch. Um, I enjoyed the daily. Uh, are we uncaptaining? Captain, captaining, uncaptaining. I think we are uncaptaining, and then we're immediately going to the chamber. Can we before we get in the chamber? And I become depressed. I would like to ask production for something since we're the, we know they're listening, and the reason I know they're listening is because I know select members of the cast are listening and that's all we're going to say about that we did cut out something earlier in the episode so that's all we're going to say okay uh no i am going to say something all all i'm going to say which we've said numerous times and i actually think i said without even planning earlier we are commenting on what is being shown to us. I yes. know this might be a crazy thought to some people, but I don't know what they aren't showing us. Steven right. doesn't know what they're not showing us. We also get these episodes before they air. So all of the comments that the cast is making on social media as it's airing, we don't have that information either. You have our DMs, and I'm sure you know when certain episodes are coming. So if you would like to filter some information to us to be like, hey, so when you see certain things going down, I would like you to know certain other things. I think that's that's a really good strategy because, you know, that just. This is, again, not about a very specific example, but. um. Mixie got dragged in the DMs, and she will take it gracefully because she honestly did nothing wrong. She, her, Mawaya. Athlete. So because we know production is obviously listening because we can draw lines and go, cast is listening, production is listening. Uh, can we just please have a, you know, maybe a weekly Tori and Avery sitting poolside in bikinis segment, please? I I don't think anybody was mad at that. No, 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 no. I think... You look at the entire demo of the show, they were all pretty happy about that. So, you know, just for later, we'll get to something else in just a little bit after after the chamber that was like bazinga, for lack of a better term. So, um, chamber time, mix, chamber time. Chamber time. Um, Guess what? This chamber was pointless. Yay. It did it again. Undefeated King. The answer is clearly Laurel and Bananas going in. Why are we in the chamber? Why are we having a conversation? Why is any of this happening? But don't worry, guys. Josh put the whole thing on his back and fucked the whole thing up. I I put in my notes, Josh is so fucking soft if he doesn't go for Bananas. And guess what? Squishy little motherfucker. Soft? What an idiot. I, I just, I don't understand it. I guess, didn't Jenny and Bananas, uh, they were dating at one point? Or they hooked up or something. I, I don't know the full um, situation of that, but she's with somebody else now. The irony of Bananas being like being in a relationship and the challenge is, is bad for your game. This motherfucker hooked up with, with Jenny how long ago? And it saved his ass. Because I can guarantee you, if Jenny was like, I I'm go- I want Bananas and Laurel in, and Josh's whole team is like, I want Bananas and Laurel in, that soft little bitch is folding. Folding. 
But he had Jenny as well to be like, no, we're not going to do this. If he was standing on that island by himself, he would have fucking caved. And Josh even said it. Josh was like, if you were in the chamber with me, to Michelle, if you were in the chamber with me, this would have been easier. I felt like he was saying that to be like, you should have volunteered and this, we would have done that. And it's like, bro, you could, you can say it yourself. Like, you know, he's going to say stuff to try to change your mind. It doesn't mean like he really believes it. And at the end of the, at the end of the episode, Bananas is like, this is a game. Like yep. we're all playing a game and the people that understand that the best do the best, mm-hmm. you know, the one thing that I've heard recently that I I'm getting sick of is like, there was the whole talk after last week's episode about is throwing challenges part of the challenge. Like, is that, yes. is that okay? Yes. Sure. It's part of the show, but I also then can't have you saying I come to compete like my whole thing is like I come to compete against the best. You mm-hmm. can't uh, you can't use that logic and then also throw. Because now what you're saying is you come to win and winning is different than always competing as far as I'm concerned. That is facts. I will completely agree with you on that. And I don't know who you could possibly be discussing right now, but can't wait for a DM. Come at me, bitch. I don't care. Let's go out. It's party time, baby. Party time, baby. Oh, they're they're going out. They're having a having a nice old time out and about. There's a moment. A moment where God tells you the world is not against you. Mm -hmm. And he sends you a message. And them having this shot of Avery for no reason whatsoever i mean it's to pump devin up devin devin slid 100 to the editor it was like please put this clip in a sign from the gods that he fully supports the number one in every way i mean how else do we describe it how else do we go oh it means anything else other than them going you know maybe you should get tits of the week as the thing and i've been like honestly it's over every week Whoever did this boob job needs to have this plastered on their wall. That is a beautiful side tit. Just stunning. Stunning. Stunning? Absolute stunning. And again, Adam. My type on paper? Congratulations, Adam. Every time. Adam. Adam. Every time. Honestly, the person that keeps winning on this season is Adam. Not even there. Time. Every time, like, I'm now going to his social media to be like, how did you you do this? How did you, what, are you giving secrets away? Can I, can I pay for your TED talk? What do I need to know? And the only thing I have learned so far is he is on a cycling machine a lot, a lot. And I'm like, do I need to start cycling? Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's how you get Hooter models. Who knows? But good for Devin for getting if in on this hug. If there's any Hooters models out there listening right now, is this how is this how I do it? I just start being like a like a soul cycle person. Is that what I you do? Could be. That's a cult. But yeah, you could. I gotta learn more. I gotta learn more. I gotta learn. I gotta learn more. Okay. Get get your learning on. What else happened when we were out of the club mix? Any other gems that you saw? Um, I mean, again, Derek was standing. (laughs) Ryan? Ryan is like, might be my favorite cast member. Every time I see him, he's slaying and he's spitting absolute facts. I love Ryan. Give me more Ryan. He's really good. The blue eyeliner he had on at the elimination. Okay, sir. Fuck me directly up. Sounds good. It, and I just love how he's like, like he's like, well, she wants to keep her gaze here, so it's not going to be us. I was like, obviously, uh-huh. obviously, I love that. that's what's going to happen. Yeah, ally. He's sit, he's sitting there talking, to, standing there talking to bananas, just like biting his nails. Like, I just want you to get the motherfuck out of this bitch. And somehow, you sneaky little snake, you got away with it again. 
there are so many underlying things that we're not seeing as part of this because I know he does not like Laurel. He was like team Nicole after everything that happened, which again is, I don't want to say is starting to make more logic because again, I don't understand what Nicole says half the time. And that also seemed to be like, we got like 5% of that story and we were all supposed to be like, Oh, okay. We know everything about this relationship. You know, I, I would say it's a lose lose. Yes. There, there's probably no side I would really want to be on, or at least like Kyland, like, you know, four, if you will, because you don't remember. That's what I want to call it now. When you're Kylanding for somebody, is what you're like, I'm leading the charge and like supporting fully. And I was like, mm-hmm. again, my guy, we didn't ask you last week. I love how they also put that back in at the beginning of the episode. Yep. And they're like, in case you forgot that he immediately supported this person, knowing what we know now about the situation. As we're leaving, we get bus shots. This is the first time we've been getting bus shots, bus shots, bus shots, bus shots. Mixie, they blue balled us on this uh, bus We got shot. an aerial bus shot. I'm going to take it. A moment years in the making for the number one i'm gonna i'm i'm about to tell you how i wrote notes for this because this was all about johnny saying to michelle i think Devin is using you for the game and wanted to break them up he said that earlier to someone i don't remember she was vaping yes I, i flew into a blind rage i was furious i couldn't see anything but rage i go Excuse me, sir. Uh, Moriah. Uh, Moriah. I've been saying this every time we see bananas in this season. He's like, oh, you shouldn't get in a relationship. It's such a bad idea. Moriah. And then let's see Mawaya. what happened. What happened to Moriah last year? Oh, she got into another relationship on the show that helped Crazy. her and helped somebody else. So again, you know, uh, don't, don't, don't slam it because you've tried it. Anywho. He says this, we hear audio of him confronting Michelle. No video. I'm choosing to believe that there was not a camera there because if there was, we would have for sure oh, yeah. seen this. So yep. I think a mic Unless pack was on. protecting him with this edit, but. But I don't think they are. I think people are sitting there going, why would you, like, don't, who gives a shit? I, I, you're not Michelle's bestie. Like, you're clearly just upset that you think Tevin's going to come from you, which is what he said later. Um, but they confront that, and then Michelle goes, so I have to tell Devin. And then I was like, you guys, it's happening. It's, we've been Bus waiting fight. for years. The Bus number fight. one is making it happen. We talked it in to existence i don't want to say we manifested that yeah Mm -mm. not saying that but last week we saw ct getting on the fight with the bus that they put out as a deleted clip why how dare you in the episode and i was like that goes to go in the episode so this week we're gonna get it and they gave us that like you're right aerial thing and I, i wrote down bus footage Bus footage. I paused. Bus footage. Oh my God. I'm reading my notes. Bus footage. Bus footage. Oh my God. Mixie bus footage. Can you believe that we actually made this happen? What a great day. How are we going to celebrate? And then I hit pause and then they were just back in the fucking house. Yeah. And I'm I'm sitting there now they're back in the house and I'm like, Devin's going to fuck up bananas. I want Devin to verbally destroy this man. And all he does is have like a bit of a spat with Michelle, not even anything serious. She's like, this is just going to ruin our night. And he's like, yep. And then they both go to bed in different beds. And that was it. Um, And I'm like, are we not even going to confront bananas right now? And then Devin does confront bananas. And I will say, did I originally want Devin to verbally assault bananas? Yes. Would it have been funny if maybe some things were thrown? Sure. But how Devin handled this situation was so hot, so incredibly attractive. He stood his ground, he protected his girl, and he stayed cool, calm, and collected. He did not move. He was lounging on that couch, feet up on the coffee table, unaffected, got his point across, 
rattled bananas to the point rattled where bananas. he he's making shit up. Oh, and then he goes yeah. and works out, and Michelle's like, "Hey, you said this," and he's like, "Whatever." Devin won. Devin won that easy. It should. You can't even call it a fight when that happens because that's not even a fight. You know no. what I mean? Like it's like, mm-hmm. oh, somebody got in the face. No, somebody just got knocked the fuck out, and it was over. Like that's yep. that's that's how this went down. The fact that he even tried to start the conversation and be like, that's not what I said, when we literally heard the audio five minutes before that, is just like, did he not realize what he said? You know, that's, that was more of my point is like, do you not realize what you had said out loud while you had a mic pack on? Or were Maybe you a little boozed drunk? up? Yeah, yeah, we were a little boozed up and didn't and he realize. fully remember what he said and he maybe said too much but thought he was being sly about it. I don't know. But I thought he was I tiptoeing do think around. This is the beginning of a Devin Johnny bananas feud that we're going to see here. And once again, our girl Michelle is just there. <laughs> Wasn't part of this that he was like, you just want me out. And it's like, yeah, but, but me coming Everybody to wants you. you out. Be coming to you and saying, hey, you said this about my girl. Uh, that's fucked up. Is not him trying to get you out of the game. I don't see like him trying to make that up is going to get you out of the game. Listen, Josh, Josh could have got you out of the game five minutes before. He could still change his mind, as a matter of fact. Uh, did you? They, I feel like they were trying to edit it to make it seem like he was going to change his mind. I th- maybe that's where they were going with. No, of course he wasn't going to do that. Uh, I also have sent you a new photo, which I'm now going to put on the screen here. Uh, tell me what you see is wrong with this photo. What is catching you off guard? Now, this is a still from the conversation. What do you see that is hidden? We're going to play the hidden hidden game trick with Mixie here. Let's let's see how long it takes her to find the hidden thing. She is searching for our audio-only people. She is deep looking. Oh, there's like a head twist. Her eyes have squinched together. She has furrowed her brow. Has she found anything weird with this photo yet? There's a person in the doorway or in the window. And it's There you go. In the window. There is a person in the window. Where's Waldoing the camera people? I that <sighs> I have inquired and I have been told. That is an absolute boss move from Tina. Classic Tina. I if you would have let me guess, I would have guessed Tina. We love Tina. Fantastic. Man. Just we love like, her. Look, she's just like it's like she's trying to hide her head under a lamp. Like, oh, I'm not here. Hilarious. She put a lampshade on her head. God, I love Tina. I love Tina so fucking much. Let's she, go to she the elimination. Doesn't miss. We shall doesn't. go to the elimination. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Josh somehow looks like even bigger of a fucking idiot by having his band over his sweater. I'm sure production was like, I need to see it. But my guy, every, like Jenny's in a tank top. Everybody's like in T-shirts and shorts. Like it's clearly not cold. This motherfucker's like, I'm going to wear a sweater and then slap the band over top of it. I just. You have to have a better shirt for that. He grinds my gears. It's just like, just just try. Try to not look like such a little soft bitch. Please. You have a fat ass, by the way. I saw it. It was it, it did not get ass of the week this week, but I saw it. And I'm not going to sit here and act like you being a soft little bitch didn't cause you to lose ass of the week this week because that would be outside things and that's not the case. But I did see some cheek and you're juiced up, my guy. Why are you such a bitch? Is this what Big Brother does to people? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it does. Maybe, maybe, maybe it does. Um, he still had an opportunity to change his mind here. And I really thought he was because like everything lined up. Like now you have him, you have bananas trying to break up one of your friend's relationships and be like, he's using you. He's sitting on the couch when they're arguing. Josh is there. I know. And then you could just go, listen, Laurel did stuff last week. 
you've done stuff now. I'm going to put you in and we're calling it a day. But he wants to be friends with bananas so badly. He wants to fill the Tony Rain spot in Banana's heart that he will put his own game in front of him to serve those needs. Well, he does the same shit with Wes, too. This is it's the same thing. I just honestly I think he's a fan, which is is adorable. But like, oh, dude, yeah, 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 yeah. Play the fucking game, my guy. Wake up, wake up, please. I think he'll respect you more when you did that. If you, yeah. Am I? If he didn't do that in USA two, are we supposed to think he would have done it now? That like this is a way of like saying we're good because guess what you're never going to be good with johnny he'll be like hey remember that one time you didn't say you were going to say my name and you said it he's like yeah but i could have thrown you last time but you did do it that one time it's like you're never going to be good it's the laurel effect it's the same goddamn thing um yeah i mean i i still remember when josh voted for bananas and then immediately told on himself that was classic josh um just wasn't that the one where you didn't have to say who you were voting yes, for either like correct. the names just popped up so you could have just been like wasn't me wasn't wasn't me was my period, guy i think when they were in the chamber josh was like bananas brought up that i voted for him in usa too and like he doesn't even know how much that affected me i'm like we all saw it you fucking cried about it the entire episode you couldn't even do it in like a semi and then you told on yourself immediately like i don't even think the voting was finished when he when he told on himself yeah people were still going up there he's like hey real quick i voted for you sorry about it yeah he's like you voted for me he's like yeah i know and he's like why it's like the best part was like i remember him just being like i don't know and it's like you're gonna vote for him at least have a good idea like have works have like a a good go Awful. Well, I think, Awful. like I said, I think editing was trying to make it seem like that he might change his mind. I knew there was no chance in hell. You agree with me on that. I, I liked this elimination a lot. Um, I did think it was entertaining and fun. Um, Mr. TJ also loved this elimination. I don't think I've ever. He seemed very pumped and the trash talking as well. He's like dying laughing during it. I just love seeing a happy Mr. TJ. I really do. It really does change the uh, the the level of everything when mr tj's into it i can't sit there and go well i'm not into it mm-hmm. because mr tj's into it yep. and he is my north star forever and always so if mr tj says something he likes mm-hmm. it or somebody crushed it then i believe that someone crushed it a compliment from Mr. TJ is uh, is better than a, the same exact words from somebody else. Can you imagine, like, if you lost, but Mr. TJ, like, you were you there, and you were the second one to make it up the mountain, and Mr. TJ goes, hey, you came in second, but you were the one I was rooting for. I would just jump off the mountain, because I'd be like, it's not getting better at this point. I would have told everyone I won. That was me winning. That's my W. I don't know, immediately turn to the cameraman. I go, give me the card out of your camera right now because I don't want this disappearing somewhere mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it never sees the light of day. Mm-hmm. Please find it for me. Please find it for me. And then they don't. Uh, I like to call this elimination. Uh, this was all about the faces. So you're going to see on screen now uh, Brad's incredibly red face as if he was just choked out. Uh, by an MMA yep. fighter. The yep. fact that our guy Brad looked like this after the elimination. I, I I feel like somebody might be contacting him now to be like, hey, please go to the doctor and get these a couple things checked. Right. Like a doctor saw something. and was like, oh, that mm-hmm. doesn't look right after mm-hmm. throwing balls for a little while. OK. And then we have this face from Rachel, which is honestly terrifying she had it the entire time she was launching these balls and i paused and i was like yo this if i saw that and i'm john a and i saw that i would have just sat down in the sand my time's over Mm -hmm. i'm not winning i i can't make a face like that it's over the intimidation has got to me i lose i should just go home now uh the question i do have for john a is 
Um, last week you said if you self-dominate, put yourself in, and then you go home, you would tell your husband that you did it to yourself. I know you didn't self-dominate, but in a way you kind of did by saying you weren't going to self-dominate. Uh, yep. How did that conversation go? I would love to hear that as well. Maybe we'll talk to her. Who knows? Who knows? Probably not. Probably not. Outlook not as so good. A, not so good. Not, not so good right now. Uh, Rachel absolutely dominated in this. I loved watching her play this. Rachel's a fucking queen, honestly. She's just incredible. I'm glad that we got this from her, and she wasn't in last week, and the last two eliminations I got from Rachel would have been taking nails off the wall and throwing knives into a wall. Like, we got two of these. I also really liked the elimination i do still feel at this point we missed an opportunity that every elimination should have been something we've done in the past i making this about eras right it should have been like okay they don't all have to be balls in but it's like hey remember this one from season 21 this one and it's like oh yeah that one and they show the clip of somebody doing Mm -hmm. it right there are some that are classic that they haven't gone back to again. Like, yep. If we get through Battles of the Eras and we don't try to recreate the backpack, the Johnny Bananas backpack at some point. I agree. I, I mean, maybe the final is just a bunch of different old, ooh. like old things, which I would hope that they would do. But I completely agree with you. And especially because the season started with us doing old eliminations i really thought that this was going to be a theme and it was right in front of their faces and they they tasted it they took a little lick and then they were like nope never mind let's let's let them rip nails out of a board that'll really that'll do it but you know what i enjoyed this elim i had a great time and rachel did too she gave us that sand clap at the end in the oh, Unreal W, did. and then she became this week's Pass of the Week. Deserved. And, and coming in at the very end, I will say, I got a clip of Naya in that orange dress at the club, and I was like, but Rachel gave me full ass in the sand with the sand clap. I mean, I had to give it to her. She fucking crushed this episode. Shouts out to Rachel and congratulations on your ass of the week. When we got by the club uh, or the night out and nobody got it there, I had an inkling it was going to be her in the sand there. Um, Because I was like, it's really tight in this episode between there was a few there. And there was an Avery running at the daily as well. Yeah, that happened. There was. And I was just like, my God. And like, again, Jenny, anytime they show Jenny is just mm-hmm. ass. Kate's good, you know? Yep. It's all yeah. muscle. It's just a ball of ass muscle. You know what I mean? It was just a beautiful shot. It was a beautiful ass, and it was a beautiful W for Rachel. Um, we end the episode with new targets. Uh, we'll see what comes of that. Again, I want to remind everybody there's this weird karma thing that's happening that they are they show ever so slightly occasionally. Just want to throw that out there. That's still happening, everybody. We're not seeing it. It's still happening. Keep it on the top of the dome. It's coming back. I'm telling you what's going to happen. People are going to think, well, we didn't see everybody say who they were voting for, so they rigged it. Because apparently this is the season of rigging, and this is what happens when you stop believing everything that people tell you. It's, oh, everything must be rigged. Oh, everything's fiked. Calm down. I wonder how this elimination was rigged. We'll yeah. find out on Twitter. Can't wait. I'm sure somebody will say that the balls were heavier on one person's side and mm-hmm. the things weren't as sharp on the other side. Am I going to sit here and go to the conspiracy corner and be like, they rigged it for Tina because they wanted to keep people from era one? No. Can I sit here and say that clearly human error was involved in this? Yeah, I can say that. Which brings me to this point. Let's just figure out a way of taking the human element out of eliminations, please. Yep. And thank you. That's what we need to do. And if that involves people picking up things to put them back on the board, clearly for television purposes, 
So when we show a board, it shows all the ones already in there. You know how we show progress on this show forever. Or anything else, it's not always rigged. Okay. Am I happy it's Tina's not. still there? Yes. But are you Rachel. living in some side of fantasy world where last week you think they would want to get rid of Emily on this show? C T when she could and C T? Like you're saying it was rigged because Tina's things fell out and they wanted to keep Tina. I'm sitting here saying if they wanted to rig it, respectfully, Tina, I love you. They would have preferred to keep Emily there because mm-hmm. are you telling me they would not love to have an Emily, Cara, Laurel showdown at some point? Really? Could we not get all three of those women in a final with Greaseback Bun Babe and Jenny maybe and have like some absolute beasts of women like women who have won finals going against each other in battle of the eras just tell me how that story doesn't make sense to you no it was human error because i guess somebody took a lunch break and didn't hammer them in as much as the other person did so let's try to get all the human element out of the eliminations it's not like we do a lot of these so we don't need it get it out we don't bye-bye See you later. We don't. Mixie you, you, Mixie, you told me there was a review and you have a hottie, right? I have a hottie. You have a review. I have a hottie. Uh, rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. Rock, One, two, paper, three, scissors, go. shoot. I win. Oh, uh, you yeah, paper. You go. All I do is win. No matter what. We have one new hottie. From Columbus, Ohio, Ohio. Ugh, love Columbus, it. Ohio. Oh, God. Brittany Ford. When asked the names of the hosts of The Right Reality, she said, First Life Steven and Past Squirrel of Detroit Mixie. <laughs> Correct spelling. I would like to say thank you, everybody, for your support of me discussing my past lives. I, I really took a gamble. I really stuck my neck out there. And it really meant a lot that you guys also were discussing your past lives with me. I love hearing about it. If you didn't talk to me about your past life, go to the hotties. Go to the comment section here. I yeah. want to hear about your past life. And I, I want to wish Steven a happy first life and hopefully more to come. Maybe you'll be a guinea pig. I could be a guinea pig. Uh, shout out Brittany Ford. I hate that you went to Ohio State University. Boo. Boo. The- go blue. The oh god, I hate the. that so much too. Oh, uh, they're like the and like oh, get over yourself. Um, mm-hmm. but obviously, um, I'm gonna be respectful because she is a redhead, she's hot because she's a hottie, but her profile says she's married, so I will be respectful to her husband and just say, Welcome to the hotties. Welcome to the hotties. Thank you for the engagement. The Guys, join the hotties if you're not a part of it. Like I said, we're talking about past squirrel lives. We're talking about eliminations. We're having people guess the seasons. I mean, we're having a great time in there. Please join the hotties. Link in the description. Get a bag. Uh, our review for today comes from P-E-R-R-I-V-A-N. Per- Paravan? Paravan? Maybe. Paravan? Maybe. Five stars. And it's titled The Realist, my fave challenge podcast by far. They say what we're all thinking when the other podcasts are too scared. 100% emoji. I couldn't agree more. I probably should be scared. And it's not like people are going to DM us and tell us how they feel about what we said about them on the show or anything like that. You know, I I should be scared, but I'm not. You should come at me. You, should, you, should you be don't scared. scare me. You don't scare me. You scare me. me. You probably should, though. For the record, you scare me. Okay? Okay. Uh, boys and girls, that does it for this week. Unless by some miracle there is an interview after this somehow out of out of nowhere. Um, I think they might pick up next week for reasons that you guys don't know about, like behind the scenes MTV stuff. But hopefully those uh, start next week and we can get you some of those interviews. Uh, but other than that, we appreciate you guys listening as always. Please, please, please go subscribe on YouTube. Uh, lick yeah. the button and pee on the thumbs up button. I don't know how it works, but Hot. please. Good, I mean, 
I'm not into it, but you know. Cuck us on YouTube. No, Hit that don't. subscribe button. Love you guys. See you next episode. Bye. 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 We're being cucked now. Bye.